Dave here, and today we're going to check out the work of Miko Kainunen. Kinunen. Um, he's an artist based in shit. I'm not sure exactly where, but he did some work for for his clients, include Microsoft, 343 Industries, Insomniac Games, Bioware, Blur Studio, and the Walt Disney Company. Um, thankfully, this guy does have a few websites featuring his work so um, unfortunately though based on his portfolio on ArtStation he doesn't have a lot of work I will still be linking his portfolio on ArtStation in the um, description below but I will be linking pretty much every um, site that has a lot of his uh, or that features a lot of his work um, yes he does sometimes use 3D but I am way more fascinated with his um, 2d stuff because he does have a way of uh painting that kind of um makes me come alive <laughs> i would put him in the category of he's kind of a mix between richard anderson i did an art review of his work as well and at the same time he kind of reminds me of john mccoy which i also did an art review of and uh, he is kind of a minimalist painter um He's not very heavy on the brush strokes, and I guess he has a bit of a, a Craig Mullins to, it, to his uh, style, where he likes to build up the paint in a way. Um, so yeah, let's begin the uh, the review. So these are some some sites that kind of uh, feature his work. Again, I will be linking all of them in the description below. So here, it's obviously photo bashed. However, I must say... If you focus in on some parts, it's pretty clean. Um, it's not as like it's not a matte painting in any way, but there is a there is this kind of um clearness to his work. Uh and if you look at again, I do recommend you check out John McCoy's work. He does paint minimalistically as well, but it's like he doesn't seem to waste the brush strokes. It still feels like a lot. Like there's brush stroke after brush stroke, but it's not that heavy. And it's easier on the eyes. There's not too much information involved. And it kind of balances it out with his um photo bashing. And it does have it ends up looking rather clean. And sometimes it's it actually looks less like a painting. But you can tell if you just zoom in on some parts. Um it does look you know, it, it, you can tell that it's painted by hand. Um and he does focus a lot on sci-fi designs, some ship designs, and the environment. He's not a very focused, or he's not very focused, I guess, on character, feature art. He does have that focus. Um, now this one does remind me a bit of Sparth, just because of the, the thrusters in this ship. Um, I, I guess it's pretty common to have like round thrusters, but I guess because Sparth keeps using the same shape. For his ship designs, it, it kind of it's pretty much implanted in my mind that it's a sparth kind of thing. But um, again, if you focus on the shapes or in the individual parts of this ship, you can still see the the basicness of the strokes. It's not that heavy in terms of brushwork. It's rather clean. Yes, it's unfinished, but it's a solid sketch. It feels like if you zoom out, it feels like an actual scene. And this is the, this, these are kinds of sketches or quick paintings that impress me the most because it feels complete even when it isn't. And it's not even that sketchy. So that's kind of cool. And it feels like it was done fast and it's so useful to do these sorts of things. Because you can tell if, some, if it looks good in this level, even if you keep adding detail, it's pretty much finished already. Um... This one, it's uh, again, you can still see the. I, I guess he's just using a round brush for the most part. Um, a lot of his works have that at atmospheric um, vibe to it, and oftentimes it looks less like a painting. Um, if you look at Craig Mullen's work, oftentimes his paintings do look like paintings. Where it seems, I mean, you can tell there's this gradation of values. There is a 3D um, sense to his work. However, 
it still feels rather flat. But for Miko here, it feels more expanded. I guess it's because of the, the leveling. Like there are soft, um, gradual gradations. And maybe it's because of, this, of the, uh, the smog effect. I'm not sure, but there's something about his work that makes it look rather or more real than painting or more real than a painting. I guess it does remind me of Yi Lu. Hopefully I'm saying his name right. Or Yu Li. Yi Lu or Yu Li. Um, I did an art review of his work as well. He's very heavy on the photo bashing. He is way more impressionistic though compared to Amiko, but uh, yeah. It does, it's pretty good with the atmosphere, with the mood, uh, sorts of uh, stuff. Here you can tell it's rather messy, um, but it makes sense. It's all in under one hue, or it's not that. Um, I mean, the idea is clear. It's, it's just that the, um, it's obviously a chaotic scene, so it does make sense. It's not that bad. Um, it's a quick concept, but it works. It, ge it gets the mood out, and it makes sense. And I, I don't see a lot of brush variety in his work. I guess it's more of the, the efficient kind of uh, painter. Now, this one does feel more like a, a Craig Mullins. Very, very, it, it, it looks more like a painting. And yes, it does look rather flat just because it doesn't have like this kind of atmosphere. Um, not a lot of soft brushes being used. Um, so it does look a bit more graphical, a bit more like a painting. Lots of textures here, but they're actually from the, or from photos. Um, if you're focusing on the brushwork, I think he's limiting himself to just the round brush. But that's kind of fascinating. Um, I guess it's a great way to be more efficient. Um, I personally would add a few more brush types just because, but then again, he is compensating the textures from the, or with the use of photo textures. Um, pretty cool. I think he does add noise in the end as well to kind of put everything together. Now, this one's pretty cool. If you look at this ship, it's rather sketchy. It's unfinished really, but... It looks real if you zoom out. If you, if you try, I'm um, just zooming out here. It looks like a keyframe. I think he would do well in keyframes. Um, because we're storyboarding because it's pretty fast anyway. It feels like this was done fast, but it's so efficient. And it actually feels like this whole thing is an actual planet. Like you can see or feel the depth. Of the environment and that's kind of an interesting thing to do because when i'm whenever i'm doing paintings i often it often does look rather flat and it's pretty hard i guess to do uh or it's even harder obviously if you're doing environments because how do you make that environment feel like it's in the right scale because sometimes you can see paintings where um based on the subject matter it looks it's supposed to look big but it's not presented or presented as so. So it looks kind of squished and flat, almost isometric. And it, it kind of takes away from the the emotion, not emotion, the, the intensity of the whole scene. So um, maybe it's because not just because of the, the values, but maybe the perspective shot. Fuck. Um, but I do like it. I mean, look at the, it's so nice. And he, he does overly, I guess, uh, uh, the painting with a lot of layers uh, you can tell by the the lighting effects here i'm guessing he plays a lot with the the blending modes i'm assuming in photoshop um now this one it feels like this was still done with the use of photos i mean you look at how the brushwork was done here it's so flat and basic you can tell like parts of these were from a photo and then he just uh, cleanly cleaned up the edges layer by layer um, separate the, the background from this whole um, satellite ship thing design. I like the shadow part here. It looks so realistic. Um, now obviously the earth in the background is like from a photo I guess. But uh, look at how efficient it is. 
and it looks neat. It looks neat. If you focus in on this part, you can still see that round brush being used. Again, not a lot of brush variety. It likes to keep it clean and uh, cut. Even the shadows here, damn. Um, you can see some. You can see some smaller ships, I guess. Um, I do like how the shadow of this part isn't as cut as this part. I guess the farther something is, the, sh the shadow edge is going to be slightly softer than if it were closer. So that's it adds to that realism. Um, and it's kind of hard to do these sorts of scenes because it's, it, it's in space, so it's hard to find reference photos and uh, make it look... Um, make your designs or concepts look realistic. Um, here we have a sci-fi city. I'm not sure what this is in the sky, but it's cool as hell. Um, I think he did add a bit of lens correction. You can tell this kind of glitch effect. Um, did he use 3D? It doesn't seem like he used 3D. Maybe he did. It's hard to say, but it looks awesome. Um, what I can tell you is I can't actually see the brushstroke, so maybe he did use 3D. Um, I can tell here, I think he did use some photo bashing for the lights. But shit, I'm just guessing at this point. But I do like the depth of this um, um, scene just because of these um, panels in the sky, they do look rather big. Again, the whole atmospheric thing, it looks big. It feels big. And even though this is just a 2D image, it feels like, like I'm there and I'm being, like I'm, I'm in the center of this all, of all of this, <laughs> shit, sorry, of all of this. And it looks cool. Um, it's really hard to see the, the brush strokes though, so I'm not sure how he did this, but it looks amazing. Now this one does remind me a bit of Eric Gagnon. Um, I did an art review of his work as well. Uh, 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 I did. Jesus. I did an art review of his work as well. Um, very, very impressionistic. And that reminds me a bit of District 9. The ships. The ship designs in the film District 9. Um, where the insects are shrimp people. <laughs> They're kind of like shrimp insect people. Um, or aliens, rather. Lots of uh, paraphernalia in the outer shell of the ship. Um, but these ships, I like how whenever you do sci-fi designs, it's essentially two parts, the darks and the lights. And that's kind of enough to, uh, I mean, you could, it's pretty much, it applies to pretty much everything, but however, it's just more obvious, I guess, when it comes to mechanical types of uh, concepts, because when you're doing organic stuff, you can see this nice gradation of forms. Where the smoothness, I guess, of the or in the surfaces makes it less sharp, but for sci-fi hard surfaced designs, it's so obvious to see the the lights and darks being separated. Um, this is rather impressionistic, which I do like, and and I'm a fan of. So, yeah, I think he did use a few custom shapes for this one. I'm not sure what this thing is, but I like it. Um, it's pretty messy, but it still feels big. Ish. And I think there's something above it, like a bigger ship, perhaps. Hard to say. But you can get the gist, or you can feel the gist of the, the ship's design. More antennas in the bottom, I guess. I'm not sure what they are for, but uh, it looks like a ship. So, makes sense, I guess. Um, I do. Uh, now for this painting, you can actually see more of the brush strokes, and if you if you're kind of seeing this for the first time or from afar, it looks kind of simple and basic. But what makes it look big, I think, is because uh, is the is this ship. If you zoom in right here, it's this small ship. I think it's because 
E shit. I think it's because of the way he used the um the brush strokes or it's the brush strokes are so small for this um baby. It's not baby, but this the ship. It looks detailed or even more detailed from afar. It makes everything else big because it, this ship was painted small. I'm um, hopefully you get it. Because I do know that this painting feels rather big. Now, if you removed this sh um, ship, this whole painting would not work or would not feel like it's big. So I think this is a great way to um, save time. Um, all you have to do, I guess, is just add a bit of contrast in terms of uh, detail, in terms of the size, I guess, of the brushstroke. Because I think that's what making that that's where this ship is what is making this whole painting work. In terms of scale and atmosphere, it's the the amount of or the the size, the contrast in terms of detail. I think the clouds are kind of messy, um, but it works. Here we have it's a bit lots of photo bashing. It's hard to see the brush strokes. It is kind of messy here. It's almost like a um, a watercolor wash, except it was done with photos. This one's pretty vague, but... And you can see the lens flare effect being copied. <laughs> but it works. It works. It's hard to see the brush strokes, though. Um, I think this is some kind of planet or moon. It's a big moon, I think. But it looks like... It makes sense. The lighting seems right. It's kind of sundown ish. Um, so here we have um, it's still hard to see the brush strokes. Maybe in this part, you can tell you can see it just a bit. It's a bit vague though, or not as it's I don't see a lot of rendering in his work. That's the thing. He is kind of like Sparth where one brush stroke, like it, like he'll paint in a certain layer and then he'll add uh clipping masks to that specific layer for the lighting. I think that's kind of his approach. Cause look at the brushwork. It's so like it, it it seems like it was done once. Like nothing seems rendered. Like, there's hardly any blending in his work. Heavy on the shapes. Like, you can see in this structure right here, in the uh, the stairs. It's just a, uh, like a simple blot or blob of lines. Heavy on the shapes. And then he balances that simple. He balances or contrasts that simplicity with the photo textures. So it does still look rather clean. So that's pretty cool. Um, very, very interesting. Now this one, it does feel flatter just because it's painted. And with the way it's rendered, like the values of this basilica thingy is kind of the same as this air airship. So it's it doesn't seem like it's far apart. So... Excuse me, um, it feels rather flat. Even the way the trees were painted, it's pretty flat. Um, and it does have a Craig Mullins kind of vibe. Very, very painterly and impressionistic. I do like this, um, minigun. Um. Yeah, very, very impressionistic. I do like this, although the environment is not really to my liking. I do like this character way more, though. Um. And the gun looks nice. It's not even that defined, obviously, because it's a it's a sketch, I guess. It's more of an impressionistic painting, but you get the gist of it. And that's what makes impressionistic paintings look amazing for me. And uh, yeah. Now, this one does remind me of one of the paintings of John McCoy. Again, I do recommend you check out his or the art you did of his work or just skip the video watching and just check out the links 
of that video and you can see his um, um paintings it has these same designs or some of his paintings i guess very very sci-fi ish um maybe this is for the halo game who knows it does feel like it's from the halo universe um you can see that these ships are pretty much just in their own layer silhouettes for the most part obviously this one will have the most detail now this one does feel more rendered and painted um it's less sparthy and more like check out the work of john wild and Alberto. whenever he does his more intense environments or mechs it looks rendered especially from afar if you zoom in it looks very very beautifully impressionistic um but yeah so i i, I do think this was uh, or this is from the or for the halo universe um not a lot of lightings here or lighting you can see a bit of that here in this building but everywhere else it's just dark so this could be like a dead city who knows very very heavy on the smog or fog the mountains are just shaped silhouettes um, the sky was photo bashed in oh shit there's something in the sky a bigger ship maybe perhaps and look at these buildings here it's not the main focus but it has enough a bit of rendering especially in the, the top parts just to show that it you know it, it, it's it's a building some kind of structure now obviously this guy's the main um focus um some ships i guess you can't really show a person here but it's i guess it's to indicate some scale um and because of the number of ships it's a pretty quiet place it's not very busy um again i, I think this could be some kind of dead city anyway oh this is actually one of the the first paintings i found of a uh, uh, Miko, um, it's so the the the, the brushwork seems rather. It makes sense, <laughs> the, the the atmosphere, the mood is there, but the brushwork is actually rather simple. He simply used for the most part, based on what I can see in front of me, a round brush, with some opacity. Even the way he did this kind of disco area where this there's this kind of, I guess, a hologram of this babe. Look at how awesome this thing is. Even the 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 silhouette of this babe dancing in the in this kind of pole dancing thing. It's super cool. It you can feel the energy of the room. He does compensate a lot of his textures with photo textures. Um yes, I think he does add some noise in the end, but if you zoom out. I think he overlays a lot of photo textures on top of each other to achieve this sort of look. Because if we just did this with the, the simple round brush, it's it's going to look rather incomplete. I mean, this painting still is, in a way, incomplete. But because of the textures overlaid, plus the lighting, or the atmosphere, it's enough, I guess. Even the way the cables were done, or how this part of the, um, I guess there's this glass here, it's kind of diagonal. It's a wall, a diagonal kind of a wall here. You can even see the reflection of this lighting implanted on this um, wall of glass. Um, even the people were well done. They indicate some scale, people dancing here. This is the main area of focus, this could be some kind of club dance club but look at how efficient this is look at the colors so i can see a bit of texture here oh i i think this is a texture brush of some kind but again his main brush would have to be the basic round brush with a lot of opacity he builds a lot of his shapes in this one it's not like the um this guy it looks rather opaque i don't see a lot of opacity but for this one, if I may, there is this kind of buildup of paint with the round brush through opacity plus the, the layer effects with their specific blending modes. 
even the way this area kind of glows and this area kind of glows like there's a bit of a, there's a bit of a hierarchy i guess more contrast here you're pulled in here and then you look down and then up and then with these two orange um, lighting parts here i i guess this is the the vip section i mean this painting is this sketch this concept is amazing um i could make this the um the the main cover for this video i think because it's so colorful so moving on now, this one is more opaque um it's not even that clean but it's a quick con again with the round brush it's not a very it doesn't seem like he wastes time like me <laughs> so that's kind of cool um even the way he does his shadows it's not even that clean but it works Ugh. i haven't found a video of him though it would be interesting to see his actual painting for the bashing process um because i don't think he's very heavy on the 3d like i think his personal work or personal personal approach is more direct like basic photo bashing and then quick paint over perhaps very heavy on the big shapes um this one does have way more photo bashing i don't th i don't think he used 3d for this one i think I see a lot of the uh, the transform tool being used, uh, being uh, like photo parts being distorted. Um, simple layering involved. This one is on its own layer. This one is is on its own layer. This one and this one is on its own layer. Um, the way the lighting was done here, pretty cool. It seems rather wet, like it kind of rained, maybe like an hour, two hours ago. So it's kind of like dry now, a little bit. Um, it looks like a puddle of water, I think. It feels like it. Um, the atmosphere again looks amazing. I do think he adds some noise again. And I do think most of these are just parts of a photo. You can tell. Now this one, I think he did use some 3D for the, the rock parts here. But look at the, this um, platform design. Look at it's us again with the ram brush. This guy is direct and not a time waster even with this whole antenna thing nice flare effect it looks big if you squint your eyes this one will look like a 3d model if you just squint your eyes obviously you can see the, the brush strokes as you go or as you, as you zoom in but the lighting is al almost always right for him in his work and that's what makes it look cool um for this guy, I think it's just a photo bash thing. No, for this whole rock area, again, I think it's based or from maybe Blender or something. Um, it looks 3D. Like rendered in 3D. Mm. I'm not sure what this thing is, but it's a nice contrast to this um, sun. And again, the atmosphere is there, even with the simple brushstrokes. I guess his main two brushes, his, his two main brushes are the, the round brush with the opacity and the soft brush for this sorts of uh, soft gradient effects and flare effects. It's pretty basic, but it's enough. So I believe these are some of his older paintings. Um, um, I've I, These are all from different sites of his work. So now this one is way more... Painterly, impressionistic, kind of like the, the gun guy. This guy. You can see a lot of uh, smaller pencil-like strokes. It has that fade effect, kind of like in watercolor. Whenever you do like a wash, it has this fade wash effect. Like the paint is being dripped down. Now this one is actually a fantasy scene, which is pretty rare in his portfolio or in his... Um, Whenever I see his work in all of these sites, it's mostly sci-fi. This one is, I think, sci-fi, although the, the style, I would not think of this as his work just because of the amount of detail. It's too, it's almost, it is, I would classify this as an illustration, even if it's small, because obviously we're seeing a smaller version, but it looks defined 
enough to be an illustration. So it kind of shows you that he can do more complex, more finished work, but that's not what I'm here for. Um, I, I like his sketches way more. Um, I, I believe these are his older works. Very, very impressionistic still. Um, but, it, you know, it works. Again, with that round brush, his favorite brush with opacity. And uh, this texture brush, I guess, I think he used it in the, the colorful one right here. As you can see. Where is it? Ugh. There you go. So maybe he has one texture brush. Oh, he has another one too, but this branchy kind of soft brush is... Maybe it's a mixer brush of some kind, who knows? Or it could be like a soft texture brush. Um, it's kind of like a branchy scribble brush. A Li Xing Yin, or like Xin Yin, Li Xing Yin, I think, has a similar kind of uh, brush. Um, to me, it adds a bit of variety. And I think this is enough. One hard edged brush, one soft brush, and then one texture brush. And I think that's enough. And I think Ross Ross recommended that in one of his videos. He's a big YouTube um, artist here. And um, I, I think he said that that's kind of enough. And I do agree with him. Um, you don't need much to paint. Unless you have like a specific style when it comes to just painting. Um, that's enough variety. One hard edge brush, one soft brush. <coughs> Excuse me. And one texture brush. Just to add a bit of, um, just to add a bit of umph and variety to your work. Now this one does look very impressionistic. I see a bit more. I can see that pencil like stroke here. It does remind me a bit of Craig Mullins. Um you can see it here as well. The brush size is slightly bigger than this part right here, but yes. Very, very impressionistic, very, very painterly, which I do like. And impressionistic. Um, yes. Well, I think this is some kind of mech or some kind of R2D2 kind of robot. Who knows? It seems kind of off. Is this a painting or some kind of covering? Who knows? So this is the pilot, another pilot. Um, so, so you're seeing essentially an elevation, a side elevation of this um, ship. The front part of the ship. Oh, it does have a minigun in the bottom or some kind of cannon. So this is the last piece we're going to review in his portfolio or in his um, um, artworks online. Now this one feels more gritty. It seems like it was done manually or, or by hand. Just because of the of the uh the grit in the painting, but I think this was done digitally. Because I can see the round brush being used here. It just has some texture. Alright, this one has way more noise and texture in it. And it's more opaque. Usually he goes for the opacity or the 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 buildup of paint kind of look like kind of like this one. And um shit, where is that guy? I mean, he has a variety of styles, I guess. He can adjust, but I'm more into this kind of look. Now, this one is more opaque, I guess. But it's still rather... It's still efficient. It's not that, like, super hardcore rendered. It's more more of like... um, Well, maybe not the gouache, but it's, it's starting to become an oil painting for me. Just a bit more blending involved, I guess. But, um... It's still efficient. Especially in this part, it looks very impressionistic. So that's what I like. So, yeah. Um, that's it for this art review of Miko. What's his name? Shit. Uh, Miko. Miko Kainunen. Kainunen. Um, so I will be linking all of the links in the description below. So check out his work. Um, yeah. So keep drawing, keep painting, keep learning and stay free.